Ave Maria, and welcome to Divine Poetry, a series that explores the chronological parallels between the history of the Catholic Church and the Old Testament. If you're new to this concept, go back and watch my interview with Kevin Davis. The link is in the video description below. To make things more simple, I have divided up church history and the Old Testament into eight color-coded time periods. Below you can see a scrolling bar with the names, dates, and the Old Testament books for each period. Use this timeline to guide you in each video. The color frame of each video will match the time period that we're discussing. Now, let's start today's episode. Hello, and welcome to episode 23 of Divine Poetry. In today's episode, I want to mention and briefly talk about the recent assassination attempt of Donald Trump, but also the larger context and the larger set of, of happenings in a recent American political history, and how all of that is foreshadowed or paralleled with the year of four emperors in Roman history. But in order to have a, make a credible case that that's where we're at right now in terms of parallels, uh, I want to establish, even just for a little bit, maybe for five or, five or so minutes, if I can do it that shortly, I want to establish that it's actually all, all of American uh, history from its time as a colony to its time in the Republic, and now as it switches over to the American Empire, even though they're not going to call it that, um, how that seems to be very much a chronological parallel for the entire history of Rome, right up into our present day. Um, okay, so before I start that, a book announcement. I ordered, I did, it's done. Um, Father McKenna wrote the foreword and I finished it. All the edits came in, so thank you to all of the people who helped me edit. I thanked you in the acknowledgements page of the book, but just, again, thank you very much. Um, I, I, I learned what a bad writer I was in the process of having people improve my language, which was so, I'm so grateful for that. So thank you very much. But I ordered 250 copies of the book uh, a couple days ago, and they should be in in about seven days. So for all of you who pre-ordered the book, I will be shipping out your books in about a week. Um, and accompanying that book, of course, are those three color, uh, two-sided uh, color brochures, which will graphically um, depict some of the concepts of the book, more, some of the more important concepts in the book. I do have a, a pre-recorded interview with Kevin Davis that I, I did a couple days ago with him. And I'll he, he or I will release it when the books actually arrive at my house, so I know for sure that I have them. Um, I'll release that video, and in that video, I announce, of course, the book's uh, publication, but I also um, will, will announce a sponsorship of uh, a traditional Catholic gentleman who's got a small company. Um, he agreed to, uh, he, he offered to sponsor the launch of the book. So the first so many people who order will receive so many dollars off of their order after the announcement. So. Look forward to that. It should be out. I should that, that video should be out around July twenty second, around there somewhere. Great. Okay. So, um, okay, let's get started on America and Rome, and then we'll towards the end of this video, I'll maybe I should have like five or so minutes where I can talk about the year of four emperors in paralleling with uh, current American events. Um, okay. So I for eight, for the last eight years I've been trying to I've been trying my hardest to document the absolutely astonishing chronological parallels between the history of the Catholic Church and the history of Israel in the Old Testament, and I have a book about that. This whole uh, Divine Poetry series started off with that that premise as its inception point. I also have YouTube channels and, and websites and all kinds of things um, that I've been trying to do that. Um, I think it's a foregone conclusion in my mind. It's not if it's not extremely um, compelling. I, or maybe outright obvious that it's true, that God has actually caused this to happen. Um, so using that system of parallels that I've put together, um, whether it be accurate or not, uh, I'll let the reader decide, but in the Old Testament, there was a period after King Solomon died called the um, separated um, kingdom, or the, the divided kingdom. And that's when the Jeroboam breaks off and northern Israel goes into apostasy. In church history, that's Martin Luther doing the same thing in church history. He, After the Renaissance, he breaks the northern Europe away and they go into apostasy. It was during the time of the divided kingdom in the Old Testament that the colony of Rome was founded and was at 7, um, 750 BC. In church history, the Jamestown colony was also founded at that similar point in 1607. Now, uh, Jamestown was the... Um, the, the colony that eventually grew into um, present-day America, and what I mean by that is that the House of Burgesses, or the House of Burgesses, was the was the uh, elected governing body was was invented and made in Jamestown, but that turned into the Continental Congress, which turned into the current-day American bicameral 
legislature system, which is the House and the Senate. Um, and you can, you can, there's articles on this and there's all kinds of American his, his historians that have, you know, done a whole lot of work on this. But, but so, and that, the reason why that's important is because Rome has the same concept. Rome, um, Romulus, he picks the very first 100 leading families of Rome and he makes them patres, which turns into the patrician class, which turns into the Roman Senate and also the, 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 the house of plebs as well. So in both cases, um, that's the, the colony grows into the Republic, uh, and, they're both ruled by kings. Rome has seven kings uh, until they form a republic in, um, let's see, I have it written down here, in um, 509 BC. And America, of course, is also ruled by British kings until they form a republic in 1789 with the Constitution. Or 1776 with the independent doc, doc whatever, either one, but 1776 or 1789, but, right, I think it's 1776. Uh, okay, what do we have here? So much going on. Um, I better go fast, too. So um, Jamestown Colony, they have a problem where only they have men only at the colony initially. So they um, they send for a boatload of women to come so the men can be married and they can have children and the colony can grow. Rome had the same problem at the very uh, very initial uh, parts of a series of events in the Roman history. Romulus and Remus attract only criminals and rough thugs to be the first inhabitants of Rome and they have no wives. So they, they steal wives from a neighboring tribe, the Sabine tribe. Now, the Jamestown colonists don't steal women from the Indian tribes, but they do steal food. There's the Poetan tribe that, um, that has been established there, and they, you know, they, they, they've been sustaining themselves for a long time. Well, the colonists have that one starving winter of 1607 or 1608 in Jamestown, and they go in under John Smith, Captain John Smith, they go and steal food from the Poetan tribe. And so there's a little bit of a conflict that ensues. But um, Pocahontas, who's the daughter of the chieftain, throws herself down on top of John Smith so that he's not killed by her father, who is the leader of that tribe. And that's what the Sabine women did um, in Rome, because Rome stole the women from the Sabine tribe. And when the Sabines came back to reclaim their, their daughters, the, um, the Sabine the women came out from the Roman houses and said, stop, stop, stop. We don't want to have a war between our husbands and our fathers. So Pocahontas acted like the Sabine women did. I'm probably getting too much into the weeds with these little details, but these kind of details are present throughout the whole tapestry of American Roman parallels. It's astonishing. I'll stick to the big points, I guess. So George Washington comes along in, um, was it 1783, where he resigns his commission? And I'll just put on a screen. I won't even go into the, I'll go into the screen. I have so many people have seen the parallels between George Washington and Cincinnati. I'll just point out that they're chronological, right? Um, so they actually appear chronologically. The 12 tables are founded in 450, and that's the basis of Roman law. Initially, there were 10 tables, and they added two more to give the common people more rights. That's the American Constitution. Um, they added the Bill of Rights. The, the next 10 amendments to the Constitution were added so the common people could have more rights. And again, I just want to point out that they're chronologically paralleling. So here we have Roman history chronologically paralleling with American history, which is just fascinating. Um, we have a sack of Washington, D.C. by the British in 1812, and the only sack of Rome um, prior to, um, well, there, there were sacks of Rome in later Roman history, but it was after the time period, it's, it's off of this map, right? So what I'm saying is, is that if our current time is paralleling Roman history in 68, 68 AD, then they were, so there was only one sack of Rome um, in, in a time period from its, its inception to, until 68 AD. Right, so if you see other sacks of Rome, that's off this chart, right? Um, and so, by, by comparison, then if time were to continue into the future, then presumably America, or Washington D.C. would be sacked again. But as of in the purview of this chart, there was one sack of Rome, and it's paralleling with the sack of the one sack of Washington D.C. Rome then goes to found its very first road, the Via Appia, uh, and then America starts the American railway system in starts the very first line in um, 1827. In fact, I have a little quote here about that. Uh, here it is right here, excuse me. We have, um, yeah, is that right? Oh, here it is, okay, yeah, all right. The Baltimore, Ohio Railroad was the very first common carrier railroad and the oldest railroad in the United States. It operated from 1830 to 18, 1987, and it was started, the construction started for it in 1827, and there you have the Via Appia, the very first Roman road, being started in 312. Again, parallel timeline. It's fascinating. Okay, so then I'm going quickly here. Rome um, gets launched onto the international stage after the Punic Wars with Carthage, just like how America gets launched onto the world stage after the two world wars. Great wealth and power began flowing into Rome after they defeated Carthage. They were the undisputed champions of the Western Mediterranean region, and America became the undisputed 
leader of the whole Western world and the Western Hemisphere after the World Wars, and great wealth and power began flowing into America, unprecedented amounts. Prior to that, <clears throat> you had the period of manifest destiny, which was the uh, the term popular at the time that was it was trying to express that America was destined to uh, occupy the whole continental United States, and that was a time when they were uh, making they were either like with Custer's Last Stand with the uh, with the Crow Indians in southeastern Montana, or any number of conflicts with the Native Americans. Um, America was conquering its its own um, geographical boundaries. Rome did the same thing with similar tribes. <clears throat> Rome would make peace treaties or would outright conquer various other italic tribes along the way. Some of them they didn't give citizenship rights to, most of them they didn't, just like how the Americans put reservation systems in place for the Native Americans um, and only gave them citizenship uh, rights in, in more recent American history. Um, wow, okay, I'm probably, so much detail. But, okay, so then you have, after the Punic Wars, or right before the Punic Wars ended, you have the, the Gracchi brothers who were... A new class of Romans was was arising after all this wealth flowed into Rome. It, it really allowed for a, a, a much, much more robust middle class. And so the Gracchi were upper middle class Romans. In previous uh, centuries in Rome, they never would have been able to, um, to garner any real power because the patricians had a lockdown on power. Just like how the wasps, the, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, had a lockdown on power all throughout American history until after World War II is when you, you really start to see um, like the Kennedy brothers, <laughs> they were Irish immigrants who rose to the very upper middle class system. And there were two of them, uh, uh, obviously John F. Kennedy and Robert Kennedy, both um, uh, social reformers, just like the Gracchi brothers were. Uh, Tiberius was the oldest Gracchi. He was eloquent. He was assassinated first, just like John F. Kennedy, eloquent, lofty um, speech, assassinated. And Bobby was more vitriolic and more fiery, just like Gaius Gracchus was, which is Tiberius's younger brother. And they both also were assassinated as well. Uh, again, look at the time period. They correlate. They correspond. Um, we have, uh, I guess I'm just going to skip through this really quickly. You have George Bush being a new Julius Caesar. Um, they both started a forever war of occupation. Um, Julius does that. Caesar does that in Gaul. And the Bushes do that in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, the, the World Trade Center is coming down in February, or sorry, September 11, 2001, is what Julius Caesar did to Alexandria. He sent his boats in, well, okay, <laughs> Whew, too much. Um, but uh, moving forward, we have um, the whole 60s and 70s, all those uh, tumultuous times in America, Rome went through the same thing with the Marius and Sulla conflicts. Um, I have materials on that as well. I'm just going to skip through it. Uh, Obama looks like a new Cleopatra. And then, so, okay, so here we go. We're, we're, we're progressing through Roman history. Um, and then I made this uh, this timeline here before COVID hit. But um, so, again, I should just, I'm going to say this off, I'm going to say this right now, is that um, with these parallels, it's, it's, um, it's impossible to predict events in the future. All you can say is that um, it looks like we're entering this time in parallel. How that manifests and plays out is, is you know, I mean, I'm not trying to predict these specific events. What I am predicting, though, is the general pattern of events will match the general pattern of Roman events. Um, that's, I guess, that's the, what, you, what to look out for. And so that's what I see happening now, though, with, um, with Biden and Trump. I, I did a video for the series. Uh, episode 10 of Divine Poetry was about Nero paralleling Trump and Biden. And um, so there's a lot of uh, material in that video, which I won't redo. Uh, but um, um, so that's where we seem to be in parallel now. We seem to be just just on the cusp of the deposing of Nero, which I would have to guess would be um, the, the yanking of Biden out of the race or something similar, maybe a second assassination attempt on Trump. I don't know. I'm not, I have no idea. But, but whatever's going to happen, it's going to launch America into what I'm guessing is the year of four presidents. So what happens in Roman history... After Nero is deposed, um, Nero was the very last of the Ju Judeo-Claudian dynasty. He was the last heir of the very first emperor, Augustus Caesar. And so then um, when Nero is deposed, there's no one to replace him, and it's up for grabs. So the most powerful generals in Rome, they assert their, they assert their control over Rome one after the other, but because it's not established, their, their, their reigns aren't established, another one comes and deposes him. Another one comes and opposes him, right? So the four Roman emperors in the, in the very infamous year of four emperors were Galba. He was the very oldest uh, emperor Rome ever had. And he corresponds also with Biden as well. Biden is like a Galba figure, but he's also like a Nero figure. So um, it, it's, it's not exact. You can see the elements of them in American history around the same time period. Um, but so the very first is Galba. 
and then comes Otho, and then Vitellius, and the last of the four is Vespasian. And so in, in American history, it looks like we're going to have one very interesting political year um, this year. Um, so so I'm, I'm just kind of like announcing this now um, for two reasons. One, if it actually comes to pass, it'll, it'll give much greater credence and credibility to the system of parallels, which already has been, I hope it's been established already. Um, but um, to show that it actually still continues on into our time, uh, amazingly. Um, I would never dare make such a statement if I wasn't so sure that this is, was from God, number one, and number two was so dependable. Um, that's why I can kind of make this kind of like general prediction. But the second reason is because um, um, the Romans, during the year of four emperors, they just thought that their empire was going to come to an end. Um, they had high inflation during this time. They had, they had an invasion of barbarians to their northern border. I mean, all the same things we're talking about in America, Rome was going through the same things. Amazingly, there was um, a forever war um, between um, Ar in, in Armenia between the Persians and the Romans, and it, it kind of got, uh, it was a stalemate, and that's Ukraine. Um, the new Persian Empire is the Russian Confederation, uh, and um, I, I can explain that later on, but, but it's really all here. It's all happening. Um, so um, anyway, going back to what I was saying, the reason why um, sec the second reason why I like to talk about this now in this video is because as these events play out in, in American history, we're going to feel the same thing that the Romans felt. We're going to think America is going to be collapsing. Um, our whole system of um, our whole society is going to be coming to an end. Who knows what we're going to think? I don't know. Maybe you know inflation is going to get so bad, or maybe there's going to be a lot of political violence in the cities, or I don't know. Maybe. The elitist political system is going to be, uh, you know, fragmented and, and divided so so much that we're thinking like, what's going to happen? And then Vespasian, the fourth emperor, he comes along and he saves Rome. He stabilizes everything, and the Romans all hail him as the savior of Rome. A universal acclaim of Vespasian, the savior of Rome. He goes then. He dispatches his son Titus to go destroy the Jewish temple in 70 A.D. And that's very important, which I'll get back get back to in a second. So um, so imagine how this is going to seem to us. We already think that um, times are extremely, extremely crazy, and we're all already convinced that um, this could be the end of the world, right? Um, um, so um, if someone comes along in, um, sec in the secular world, in the Amer American secular world, and is hailed as a savior of America, how can that not look like the Antichrist? Um, so um, it's going to seem very um, ominous, but, um, but there's parallels for it. That's my point, right? Um, the book Vatican II and Antichrist that I wrote uh, tries to show that all of the prophecies about Antichrist were actually fulfilled at Vatican II. Um, the church is the mystical body of Christ. The mass is the sacrifice of Christ um, represented on our altars. The Holy Eucharist is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. The priests are altar Christuses. Um, Christuses. So what I'm trying to say is that the church is Christ, literally. And so an anti-church, an anti-mass, an anti-pope, anti-priest are the false Christ. It's, it's really Antichrist. But that's what my whole book's about. Um, and I also have a series of episodes preceding this one that delve into the apocalypse and show those fulfillments in, in, in the context of Vatican II. So Antichrist, I'm sure, has already come, right? Um, but we're approaching the, what looks like the destruction of the Vatican because remember I just told you Vespasian sent his son Titus to destroy the temple and the parallel for that in our time is the Vatican. Um, in, in 68 AD, the Christians have long since or are or, or about to flee Jerusalem, um, and uh, then Jerusalem was destroyed. Um, similarly, we're waiting for all the Novus Ordos to come out of the, uh, all the all the people who still have the Catholic faith or want the Catholic faith to come out of the Novus Ordo system. Um, and then likewise, by parallel, I'm predicting, um, I'm going to have to predict, that it would also be destroyed as well. Um, in my book, I talk about how I suggest that might happen. I suggest that um, really would have to happen to be a fulfillment in the truest sense would be that that Lateran Treaty would have to be revoked because the Lateran Treaty is what establishes the um, the sovereignty of the, the city-state of uh, Vatican City. It gives it autonomous nature. And if that Lateran Treaty was revoked by the country of Italy, then the Vatican would have no more protections and um, immunities. It would be instantly absorbed into Italy. It could be audited. It could be investigated. And uh, it wouldn't be a sovereign country anymore. Um, but um, that's a whole other topic, I guess. So, um, so yeah, so the year of four emperors in the Old Testament or in, in Roman history ends with the destruction of Jerusalem. And by contrast, therefore, the year of um, four presidents would have to end with the destruction of the Vatican. And I don't necessarily mean the physical destruction. I mean of, it, of its political and, and, and um, financial uh, destruction. And then also maybe possibly as well, 
um, a mob burns down the, the basilica just as a, a side note, right? But um, it would be a incredibly big side note. But what I'm saying is that wouldn't constitute destruction in, in the realest, truest sense. One more thing I'll leave you with here is that um, after the great fire of Rome in 64, um, which seems to be the parallel in our time was COVID, right? Um, that's the great uh, modern day fire. D just like the, the fire spread and spread, so did the virus, if, you know, the virus spread and spread as well. Um, Rome, uh, Nero blamed the fire on the Christians and they blamed the COVID on the unvaxxed. Um, there's a whole lot of parallels there. It's in episode 10. Go check it out. Um, shortly after that, the Roman Jewish war starts in 66. Right? And then just recently as well, between, um, between now and the end of COVID, there was the Israeli Gaza war that started, which is a parallel for the Roman Jewish war. Um, except this time, the Israelites have switched sides. Now, before they were being destroyed by the Romans in 66 AD, and now they are the Romans in our time, and, and the Palestinians are like the Jews. Um, I have a video on my YouTube channel about that, so there's a tons of amazing parallels between that specific set of instances. I recommend you watch that to see more. Um, I offer you all this huge fire hose of information just to kind of substantiate even more that we are entering the year of four presidents, if I can say that. Um, and uh, I guess I'll leave it there. Um, I know I said a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I'll, I'll link up resources so you can find out the details of what I'm talking about. Um, but I want to get this video out there soon because that assassination attempt on Trump is, um, is a major event. And it seems to be an ominous um, sign of, of uh, more tumultuous times to come. Uh, and I just want to put it out there that um, there's a parallel for that. <laughs> All right. Have a, have a great day. Ave Maria and uh, glory be to God.